Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. Tonight we're going to be reading out of 2 Timothy 4.18, His Heavenly Kingdom. The whole verse says, And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work, and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then he goes into the final greeting. So the final greeting isn't going to do us much, but we can go up five. One, two, three, four, five. And this is actually him, uh, Paul, talking personal instructions to Timothy. Be diligent to come to me quickly, verse 9, for Damas has forsaken me, having loved this present world and has departed for Thessalonica. Uh, Cretans for Galatia, or sorry, Christians for Galatia, and Titus for Dalmatia. Now, I don't know if that's the same Titus as the book of Titus or not. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And uh, I pronounce it Tychicus, but some other people pronounce it differently. I don't know. Uh, I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. So there was more writings. <laughs> we, we haven't seen them. We'll learn about those later. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. People have said, well, the apostles never wished bad on anybody. You're right. But they did pray the Lord do to them what they've done to them. May he repay him for his works, according to his works. Which means that the way Alexander is doing business with people, he's going to get paid back. Verse 15, you also must be aware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. He could be one of the reasons why we have false doctrines today. He may have uh, gone a different direction and spread a bunch of it. You never know. Verse 16, in my defense, no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. So he's not holding any blame to them, but he's holding it to the person that did it. Verse 17, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. I don't know if that lion would be Satan or an actual lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work. Could that be evil works in the world or evil works that we do? Maybe both. And preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. He does that for us too. To him be glory forever. Amen. A lot to consider in the scriptures. A lot of little details that really jump out. Yonder city of the great king is a place of active service. Ransom spirits serve him day and night in his temple. They never cease to fulfill the good pleasure of their king. They always rest so far as ease and freedom from care is concerned, and never rest in the sense of indolence or inactivity. Jerusalem, the golden, is the place of communion with all the people of God. We shall sit with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In eternal fellowship. We shall hold high converse with the noble host of the elect, all reigning with him who by his love and his potent arm has brought them safely home. We're going to get to talk to all the greats of the Bible, to all the people that were, were with the Lord. They are our brothers and sisters. We shall not sing solos, but in chorus shall we praise our king. Thunderously, heaven is a place of victory realized. Whenever Christian, uh, whenever Christian, thou hast achieved a victory over thy lusts, whenever, after hard struggling, thou hast laid a temptation dead at thy feet, thou hast in that hour a foretaste of the joy that awaits thee when the Lord shall shortly tread Satan under thy feet, and thou shalt find thyself more than conqueror through him who hath loved thee. Powerful, very powerful. Paradise is a place of security. When you enjoy the full assurance of faith, you have the pledge of that glorious security, which shall be yours when you are a perfect citizen of the heavenly Jerusalem. O oh, my sweet home, Jerusalem, thou happy harbor of my soul, thanks even now to him whose love hath taught me to long for thee, but louder thanks in eternity when I shall possess thee. That day of redemption is the day when all these things will be realized for us. My soul has tasted of the grapes, and now it longs to go, where my dear Lord his vineyard keeps, and all the clusters grow. Upon the true and living vine, my famished soul would feast, and banquet on the fruit divine, an everlasting quest. 
We have such a high calling, but it is not a high calling that will end at our death or the rapture. It is a high calling that extends into eternity after. And the wonderful part of this is, is that when we are taken home to be with the Lord, when we have the wedding, when we are joined with Jesus, when all the seven-year tribulation is over, but we'll be in heaven for that whole time, and when we return with him to cheer him on as he takes back his kingdom and then rule with him for a thousand years after the white throne judgment is done and the new heavens and the new earth are presented and new Jerusalem comes down. See, there's a lot that still has to happen. The new Jerusalem comes down and rests upon the earth. Then eternity will begin and we will have an eternity to fellowship. An eternity to communicate, an eternity to worship, an eternity to come together and praise our God and our Lord. An eternity. It seems so far-fetched. It seems so distant. But I can tell you that if you're saved, the kingdom of heaven is right next to you. The Bible says it's nigh unto you. And we can see this light, this glorious light, his glorious light at the end of the tunnel. And it is closer than it has ever been. We can see the wrapping up of human history. We can see the final events take, starting to take place and the build up to them, indicating that final time frame of seven years. People debate back and forth about this, whether it's actually seven or not. Who cares? It's a dead debate. It means nothing. There will be a time of wrath. There will be a time of judgment. Period. End of story. No discussion needed. Whether you agree on how long it is or not is irrelevant. There will be a time when God will pour his wrath out on this earth. There will be a time when Jesus will reap the harvest. There will be a time when he shall stand on the Mount of Olives with both his feet, pleading and reasoning for his people, fighting for Jerusalem. There will be a time when we will return with him and we shall all stand on that holy mountain that, according to the Bible, will rise up above all. We will stand around him at his throne. We will kneel before him in glory. We will glorify him in eternity. When you think about that and meditate on those things, it makes this life seem so much less important. It makes things in the future so much more important. And it causes us to look at things in such a different way, to not care so much about things other people care about, to not worry about things other people worry about, but to focus more on what we're waiting for. Because whether I leave this earth by rapture or whether I leave this earth by my appointed time to die, I live in Christ. And I will go to be with him the moment I leave this earth. There will never be a single solitary microsecond. There will never be a nanosecond that I will be away from my Lord, ever. And so I live this life working towards that, striving towards that, looking towards that, eagerly waiting for that, watching for that. All the, all the words for him, for that, for that moment. What a glorious day it will be. We will all see each other. We will see him. And we shall all be together in eternal fellowship forever. It's a wonderful day. When we stand in his heavenly kingdom. And when we inherit that kingdom. Through Jesus Christ. With Jesus Christ. And true justice and true truth will reign supreme forever. There will be no more evil. There will be no more death. There will be no more sin. There will be no more temptation. We will stand with him. And what is right will be the rule of the day. Not what, not what we think is right, but what God says is right. And we will stand forever in his light. Never to see darkness or know it again. Never to experience the pangs of guilt, the pangs of this life. What a great day indeed that will be when we finally stand before him and see all who have gone before us. And we will have forever to talk and to listen and to communicate and to just be 
around each other, be connected 100%, not partially, not a little bit, but in all forms, physical and spiritual. And we will get to see the Father in his glory, to commune with all of the beings of the council, all the beings of the assembly. What a day, what an amazing day to stand with our Lord as his bride, as his wife, as his body. What an amazing day. I look forward to that day. This life, this life is going to have problems. This life is going to have issues. This life doesn't hold for us what the Lord has planned for us. It's the next one when everything truly manifests. And that is the day we watch for. So let us not be complacent in our belief. Let us not be lacking in our understanding, but instead let us ask God for all of these things. Let us ask him for every one of these things, these wonderful blessings and gifts, these good things that come from him, and then use them to glorify him. Use them to bless others. Use them to bring honor and glory to the name of God, to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Because our time here is wrapping up. And our time there hasn't started yet. And there's still a lot that has to happen because, let me tell you, it's going to be such an amazing ride. Just wait. When we get there, you'll see what I'm talking about. You'll completely understand. Just wait. When we finally arrive, then you'll know. Then you'll realize. And you'll wonder why you ever doubted, ever struggled, ever questioned. Why did I do that? I already knew these things. But what an amazing blessing to discover them now and believe them. Instead of waiting till then, the amount of peace and joy you receive from it is aston astonishing. The amount of understanding the Lord gives you in these things is even better. And it just makes all the problems of this world just pale in comparison to the glory of heaven. A glory we are now sealed for, and we're just waiting for it to arrive. Well, it's coming. We're destined for that. We're secure in him. It will happen exactly the way he said it will. And nothing and no one will change it. And so we can take this word, read about these things, and encourage ourselves and each other as we see the day approaching. Blessing each other and outdoing each other in blessing while we wait for our Lord, who is even more excited to see us than I think we are to see him. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you in the next video or in his heavenly kingdom, whichever comes first.